Hello everyone, Linda Israel here. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'm going to show you a little project that I picked up after watching Natasha of Treasure Books. It's a multi-pocketed little journal insert. So let's come along and I'll show you what I mean. She started with some scrapbook paper. Hers was two-sided. Mine is not and it has a price tag on the back side. I know I paid like 20 cents for this. I bought a whole bunch and I've got a couple of them. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I want to trim these down because I want this to fit into my journal a little bit differently than with the way that Natasha's did. And by the way, I'll have the link to her video linked up. It'll be either below. There may be a little eye at the beginning of the video. So definitely check that out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this to a 10 inch square. So I'm going to put it on my paper cutter here and cut off two inches. Rotate this and I'll cut off two inches again. And I'll save these for another project. Now that I've trimmed these down, I want these to become one piece of paper. So I'm going to glue those together. I didn't glue it together before I cut it because I wanted to be able to use those strips uh, one-sided, not two-sided. So I got a bonus for my scraps. All right, so I'm going to line these up. I just put down some Aline's Tacky Glue. And I'll line this up the best I can. And I'll use my bone folder to come in here and smooth that glue out to the edge. If you don't have a bone folder, you know, you can get a, an old a brush or back of a pair of scissors. I've even seen people take a ballpoint pen and turn it on its side and hold it. All right, so I want that to dry for just a moment because if you try to start folding it while it's wet, it could tear. And so I wanted to give this just a moment for it to dry. So I'll set that aside for a second. I have a scrap of scrapbook paper and some green linen text weight paper. I ended up with several reams of this many years ago, so I'm trying to use it up. And here's what I thought I would do. First, I'm going to take these and fold them in half. I don't have distress inks around the edges, so I'm going to go ahead and grab my distressing tool. And we're going to distress ink this. So I've got a walnut stain. I buy the reinkers whenever I can. That way it's easier to replenish. Well, now that I've done those two pieces, I'm going to do this piece, which is a 4 inch by 12 inch piece of scrapbook paper. And if you don't have paper, scrapbook paper like this, make your own. You know, you can glue multiple pieces of paper together to get it to the side that you need. So don't think that you have to use scrapbook paper just because I am. I'm trying to use up what I have. All right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get out a scrap of paper and we're going to stencil, let's see if I can find one here, onto this piece here. We're going to use the maple leaf stencil. So we got this one here. I'm kind of lining it up with the edge. I want to kind of maybe have it overlap just a little bit and I've got my distress oxides I've got fossilized amber and I have aged mahogany and I've got my little brushes here so I'm going to start with the fossilized amber and I'm just going to make sure I get plenty of ink on my brush and I'm going to come in here and then just brush it over and I'm pushing kind of hard so I want that color to transfer I'm going to have to move my stencil in a moment to get down to the bottom, so I'm going to stop there and go ahead and add some distress in the aged mahogany. There's where I've added color. I'm going to go ahead and move my stencil down here. And then I want a little bit more color around the edges, even though I did the distress ink. So I'm just going to come back with my aged mahogany just a little bit. It's not very dark. And I'll come back with the fossilized amber. Put your tools away so you can find them next time. <laughs> Alright, so now what I'm going to do is I want to stamp on these guys. So I'm going to get out the aged mahogany again. 
and I've got from the Schumach Elderberry Duo one of those leaves. And I'm going to ink this up. Well, it's like right down the side here. That. And then I'm going to do it on the inside. That. And let's do it again. So you're probably wondering, what are you making? Well, I'm going to make a little flip journal to go inside my other folded element that I'm waiting for it to dry. All right, so we've got those. This is a little bit wet, so I'm going to use my heat tool with that Distress Oxide because it will smear. So I'm going to stack these together. And to help me at a later step, I'm going to use my Distress Ink and kind of mark where that crease line is. And that'll be important later. All right, so I've got this piece of paper here. And what I want to do is I don't want it to be so tall, but I want it to also have a pocket. So I'm going to fold up about an inch on one end. This is going to become a pocket. So I'm going to take some glue and put it right here. I didn't have to put that leaf down there at the bottom, but I like to fill it in just in case it can be seen. And then I'm going to come up here and about... Oh, again, about an inch down. I'm going to fold that, maybe a little bit more than an inch. And then I'm going to take this piece, make sure I get it folded so that I can see it well. And I'm going to line it up inside this crease. And then we're going to go to the sewing machine and I'm going to stitch right down that valley. All right, so I'm over here at my sewing machine. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to set it for a straight line stitch. I'm going to increase. The stitch length because I don't want it really really close together I want it a little bit further apart and we're gonna stitch right in the valley here I'm just using a regular sewing needle regular sewing thread on a regular sewing machine so yes you can use your everyday sewing machine you may have to change your needle every so often because paper may dull your needle all right so I just stitched down the middle that is stitched down the middle so I'm just gonna fold this back down I'm going to take this piece and fold it up. See what I'm making now? I'm kind of making a little folding up piece. All right, so I also want to stamp. This is a new stamp, and I thought I would stamp this right inside here. It says, Life is about making memories. And I thought that would be kind of cute inside there. And then here, we're going to put a journal card that's from the Calico Collage Sunny Mornings. And I thought it kind of went with the autumn feel that I'm working on this journal for. So that's going to go there. And we're going to close this up here and fold this down. Now you may need to crease this better with a um, bone folder. All right, and then on this side, I have a scrap of a book page that I stamped one of the French, I think it's French correspondence, over a book page. And I have one of the pumpkins from the autumn small ephemera page from calico collage and i've just gone around the edge with some distress ink so i'm going to glue these together so those have been glued together and i'm going to make this a closure onto my little envelope booklet so i'm just going to put glue on this bottom half so you see i only put it below my thumb and then i want to make sure that when i put it down that i go below and don't glue the little flap shut it can happen so this is going to go in the next portion and it gave me some time for the paper to dry. So what do you think? Isn't that a cute little element? I believe Natasha also has another tutorial with all kinds of ephemera. So you might check her tutorials out. So I'm going to set this aside for a moment and we're going to come back to our piece that should be dry now. And I'm going to take this piece and now it may not be lined up perfectly and that's okay. Take your distress ink and just color it in if you will some people like to have a more distressed edge you're welcome to do that i like to do just a small amount all right so i've got this piece it's a square i'm going to take this and rotate it down and fold it from corner to corner i'm trying to get it as straight as you can i'm going to use my bone folder to smooth out and crease this Okay, now that I've got that, I'm going to take this portion and I'm going to fold it back in upon itself. I like to kind of look at it and eyeball it. It's about four and a quarter inches wide. So if I do like this. Now, Natasha says if you use the thinner uh, scrapbook paper and only one-sided, you'll have better results when you go to fold. 
So mine's a little bit thicker, almost as thick as cardstock because I'm using the two scrapbook papers together. So it kind of looks like an envelope, doesn't it? I think my mat measurements are off just a little bit, but we'll just go with it. All right, so I'm gonna open it up. Natasha has way better um, instructions. And now I'm gonna fold these top and bottom flaps down. And then these flaps, which are crooked, but that's okay. It's handmade, y'all. We're gonna go back this way. And they're really crooked. Got a little bit straighter. <laughs> All right, so we've got this little thing going on here. And what Natasha says is you want to have this, if your paper's directional, you'll have to look at it. You want this where this flap is down and this flap is up. And so we want to glue right along here. So I'm just going to put a little bit of glue along. No, wait, is that what I want? Because this is a pocket here. I'm just going to glue right down the center. So I'm just going to do right here. And I think this is different than what Tasha says. Because I think I want my pocket. Oh, that's right. Because we've got to put a pocket this way. Never mind. I have to do it like this. That's what it was. You're supposed to mark it with a pencil. So you don't go up too far. Okay. And I'm going to take this and fold it. My first one I made was perfect. Of course, now that I'm trying to record it, it's not going to work the same. <laughs> All right, so knowing that this is going to be my top, I want to make sure that I glue on this side and this side, but you know I want to decorate behind there first. So I've got a calico collage image here that I thought would look really good as a pocket in this corner. So I'm going to glue right across here, here, and then I'm going to put glue on this flap right there. I've got this little pumpkin. I've got a new autumn themed chipboard set and I thought this pumpkin would be kind of cute if we embossed on it. So let me grab some tools. I've got a Versamark ink pad. A juicy what I call pigment ink pad will work for embossing. It doesn't matter really what color it is unless you're trying to make sure that the color is true. Uh, you'll want to use clear embossing powder over it but I'm using a colored embossing powder. So I'm just mushing that onto that pumpkin piece. I'm going to grab a different piece of paper because that one's going to have embossing ink all over it. I'm going to sprinkle this glitter coppery uh, embossing powder onto my little piece. And I'm just tapping off the excess. Set that aside. And it seems like I have had this embossing powder for years and I haven't used any of it because I know y'all have seen me use it several times in my live streams, but look at that. They're still almost full. I can't even tilt it. It's right up to the line here. All right. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to heat this with my embossing gun. It's a heat tool. It gets really hot. Your hair dryer won't work. I'm going to heat this until I can see that the color is changing and the, basically the plastic like particles melt together. I do caution that if you're doing a lot of embossing, you might want to wear one of those paint masks that uh, has the respirator in it that'll filter out those fine particles because you don't want to breathe this in for a long time. I don't know if you can see that it's starting to change just a little bit. The glitter kind of shifts. It's almost done. All right, so you want to let that cool. Don't touch it right away or you'll end up burning yourself. Ask me now how I know. <laughs> so that should be somewhat cool now. You like that sparkly? I'm going to glue this guy right here. So I'm going to add some glue to the back side and then just glue that down. I'll put a stamp block on top of it to hold it in place. Now I want to make a little tag to go in that pocket. So what I'm going to do is I've got this four by six journal card. I'm going to cut off two inches. I'm going to save this to use later. And while I'm at it and I've got the paper cutter out, I'm going to cut another two inch piece. So I think I needed two of those. 
Okay, so I've got a couple of images from the Calico Collages Autumn Small Ephemera. The links will be in the description box below. So now I'm just adding some Distress Inks to these pieces. I'm pretty sure this is the same height that I kept it on my sample, so I'm going to test it out and see. Yeah, so that's going to fit. It's a tight fit, but it fits. So I'm just going to take this little word saying across the top and add just a little bit of glue on the back side there. And we'll do the same thing with this pumpkin spice. So now I'm just going to make elements to go inside the whole journal here, so our pockets. So here's one. We're going to go there. I'm going to open this up and we need to put some stuff in here. So the little booklet that I made is going over here. If you folded it right, it should fit right in there, nice and snug. Okay, I need another piece of cardstock, so I got one out. And I've got this pocket from Norella on the kit. And I want this to fit inside this pocket here. So I'm going to get out my paper cutter. And I'm going to trim this to where it's just slightly taller, maybe a half an inch taller. So I'm just kind of looking at this if I eyeball it. Right about there. That kind of looks good. Just so we'll cut that. And I'm going to round these top corners off. So I'll just use my corner rounder, corner chomper, whatever you have. If you don't have something, you could take the lid of a bottle and put it up against the edge and trace that curve. All right, so we're going to do some distress inks on this. And oh, there's all the pieces that I was looking for. And I had to make new ones. <laughs> Alright, so I'm going to glue it across here. Onto this piece. And onto this piece. So this is a pocket that you could glue directly onto a page. But I thought it would be kind of neat as a floating pocket, if you will. So it's a pocket that can move around. Glue that down. The back side is kind of plain. So I want to use the... I think it's from the Sun Kiss set. It's kind of like a little sunflower. And then we're going to stamp that in this corner and this corner. And now that I'm looking at it, I don't have enough distress ink, in my opinion, on the back. So I'm going to add just a little bit now. So I've got these little journal cards that come in the kit. I'm just trying to get them lined up here. So there's a couple. This is from the Sunny Mornings, and this is from the Autumn Breeze. And those could pop right in there, and then that'll go behind here. So over here, let's put, let's put another little pocket. So I've got one of these little sentiments from the Autumn Ephemera Pack. I'm just going to put a little glue across the bottom, maybe a little bit on the edges, because I think the piece that I have here should pop right in. All right, so I have one of these 4x4 four four pieces that I'll fold in half. I'll crease it. We'll also apply some distress inks to the edges. That's going to go in here, but that's rather plain, so let's put something on there. I have a gel print piece that was left over, so let's trim this. This is two inches, so let's do an inch and seven, inch point seven five, one point seven five. That'll go in there. I'm going to go ahead and cut another one since I've got it out, because I'm going to need it later. All right, let's put some distress inks on this. Well, I hope you're enjoying a different style of a tutorial that I do on my Thursdays. Usually I go live and we do some mixed media. So I thought, well, I'd show different ways to use some of the elements I like that. All right, so now I have this little guy. Isn't he kind of cute? He's a little squirrel. <laughs> and I'm just going to glue that right in the center. And I've just basically just made a little note card, just like that. And that's going to go right in here. Over here, I want to put a little something, something. So I've got this square of scrapbook paper. It's orange on one side. I'm going to take that sun-kissed again, and we're going to ink it up. I'm using Jet Black Archival Ink. I didn't say that earlier. And I'll just stamp all the way around filling in that square and then I'm going to cut it and I use my paper cutter because I can't cut straight 
And I'm gonna cut this into two triangles, equal parts. So I'm just gonna line it up with my paper cutter and get this down. And now I have these two triangles. So now I'm gonna get my stylus. I'm gonna put it in my paper cutter again. I know I'm out of camera shot, but I'm going over about a quarter of an inch, not quite. And I'm gonna score this, rotate it, and score on this side. All right, so I scored on these two sides. I'm gonna do that again. So now that I've scored those, I'm gonna get my scissors out and I like to fold this real quick just to see where it's gonna be. And I'm gonna cut that corner off. Do that again and cut that corner off. So these will fold up nice and neat, okay? And they've got that a little short. All right, now I'm gonna go around the edge real fast. Oh, and I need to trim this part. Who remembers those photo corners? You know, when you're doing scrapbooking and you're trying to put a photo down. So this is the same concept. We're just making a larger photo corner. I'm using my bone folder to really press that. All right, now I'm gonna use my Distress Ink, especially where I just cut. And I have this little envelope that is made by Calico Collage. And here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna slide these on. They'll kind of overlap. I'll pull them apart just a little bit to kind of get my spacing. And I'm gonna put just a small amount of glue right here. So I know that I'm gonna line this back up. I want this to be bigger than my envelope, okay? You see that? And I'm just doing it where I glue this right here to help me when I go to line it up and put it on my, my page. So I'm gonna hold it here. We're gonna put glue on this little flap, glue across here and here and here. And then we're gonna press this into place. And again, I'll put my block on it just to help hold it in place because I now wanna take this piece and we're gonna make a journal card to fit, but this is too tall, so I need to trim it. So this is roughly, what is it? Almost three and a half inches. So if I made this three and a quarter inches, that will definitely make sure that I'm inside of this little envelope. And I should be able to just fold it in half. And I need this little piece to be a little bit shorter. I thought I had it the right length. So it needs to be three, two and three quarters. So it kind of fits, it has a nice little border. Let's apply some Distress inks. And we're gonna glue this down right in the middle. And then I've got this other image from Calico Collage. It's a little fox amongst some sunflowers. We'll put that right in the middle. See that? And then this will go right inside here. That'll close shut. Bone folder to get it flat. And then this should pop right into our little pockets that we made. All right, so we got those sides, we got this one. Now we've got over here that we need to do. I need to glue down this little image. So we're to make a pocket as well on this side. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you wanna see the journal where this was applied, do go back and check my Monday, September the 21st live stream where I make the Autumn Breeze junk journals. And I'm going to be putting this into that junk journal. So you definitely wanna see that. All right, so I'm gonna glue this down. And even though it's not perfect, it didn't fold up exactly the way I wanted it to. It's good enough, I think. And I have a few little tags that I made so these were tags that um, I used a tag punch by Paper Studio and made these up because I thought they would be kind of cute to poke a little fun in the color in here. 
I'm going to use the yellow up here so you'll see those when you pull out this tag. Same here, you take that out. You see the tag. That goes like this. And then this guy, oh, you stay in there now. Okay. This guy goes in here. And then I've got a little piece of some, what do you call this, seam binding. A friend of mine used to work at Hancock's, and she gave me a whole baggie full of little pieces. And so I just found it the other day and decided to go through it. So what do you think? Is that kind of fun? Something that you can use uh, some of your elements that you have already to make a little booklet that gives you some ephemera that you can use in a junk journal. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. If you did, give this video a thumbs up and share it with your friends. Definitely come back and check me out on Monday as I'm live at 3.45 p.m. Central Standard Time. And on Thursdays at 12.30 p.m. we do a premiere video where you can live chat with me and others for probably about 30 minutes or so. So thank you so much for watching. Y'all have a fabulous day. Check the links below for any of the products that I have. If you have a question, definitely leave a question below. I'll try to answer it. And if you want, head over to lindaisrael.com and uh, do some searching around over there. Look at some of my blog posts and, of course, the products that I offer. Y'all have a great day. Bye, everybody.